So this uh, chapter is uh, chapter 10, and uh, we are going to see uh, a bit about uh, um, what is deep learning and um, what um, and how can we build up uh, 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 such a tool. Uh, as well as we are going to see um, some um, practical examples. Okay, so what is, this is chapter 10, what is deep learning? Deep learning um, is an area of research in machine learning, and uh, it is the new name of neural network. Okay. Uh, since late 1980s, when it first arose, neural network improved in algorithms methodology and um, soon followed by other techniques such as support vector machines, boosting random forests, uh, and then to become deep learning. The structure of the model calculation is widely used for image, video classification, speech, and text uh, modeling recognitions. So, but then it's it's you know with the, with this um, explosion of uh, artificial intelligence, absolutely uh, in, involves um, uh, this uh, the the the, uh, the, ne the necessity of. The, the knowledge of, of how to build a, uh, uh, a deep uh, learning network or a neural network. Okay. Uh, as I said, I'd like to uh, bring you uh, directly into uh, something which I found very uh, interesting. Okay. So uh, we have uh, some, some uh, um, uh, labs provided in the in the chapter, uh, which are focused on uh, some case studies about uh, data sets uh, provided and everything, and so case controls and everything. Here uh, is uh, what I'd like to to show you because I found very uh, insightful very interesting so the very first step to understand what's happening here um and i uh, then i'll tell you the 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 source of this uh, this code because i i use entirely the code from this github repository from tristano um uh, and um uh, now i don't want to say something wrong uh so it's uh, tristano perfetto Okay, so you can find uh, uh, this this um, uh, the repository here. I put it in the chat. Um, and so I've taken the uh, the entire code from there, which I found it very interesting. Uh, and then I made this uh, a little uh, bit of notes to to for us to to understand it, what's happening here. Okay, this is an example uh, of a plain vanilla. So we know that you might know. So this is a term in finance. Okay, uh, so but uh, it's basically used um, to describe a network architecture. Uh, and um, in artificial, this is artificial neural network. As I said, it's deep learning. Um, uh, we know that uh, there are different types of the neural uh, deep learning. So different, uh, um, uh, so very simple ones. So the, the basic, a single layer neural network or uh, more complicated ones, and we will see them uh, later on. But for now, I, I like to go into how it, how it works. A very simple single layer neural network. Okay, so uh, this is the simplest simplest implementation of deep learning model architecture made with only one in the hidden layer. 
uh, and uh, this is from the book. Uh, we we have uh, um, this vector, the input layer, which are the the x um, the, the predictors. These are our predictors, uh, and this is the output layer, our response variable, the y. Okay, within these two, there are th there is an hidden layer, just one in the layer. For for this example, okay, you can imagine uh, these are our betas, as we know when we do modeling. It's such as that, but they are a bit advanced uh, as betas, so uh, they are adjusted betas, in some senses. So we are working on a model inside a model. Uh, let Let's see what's happened here, basically. So. We are now uh, building up um, a, a synthetic data. Uh, and so our uh, X vector is uh, now a uniform uh, that ranges from minus two to two. Okay, so we can see, uh, okay, uh, that, um, we we see how it looks, okay? And then we build up our response variable as a function of X, okay? In this case, we use a um, um, cosine uh, function of two times X plus one, so whatever it is, it's, it's a function of X, okay? Sinusoid, a sort of um, sinusoid function. Uh, this is a, a Put both of them, so x and the the y x um, and the function of x, which is y, our response variable inside a table. So we can see um, so we can see that um, what is happening here is that we, we've got a predictor, one predictor and one response variable. Uh, and uh, they have a range. This is goes from minus one to one, and this goes from minus about minus two to two. Okay, let's have a look at what uh, how, uh, how it looks. So, and you can see that, uh, I don't know if, how do you find more comfortable? But anyway, it's um, uh, I made a geom line and then a geom point. Uh, we we see that it it, it is um, uh, this sinusoidal function. So let's imagine that we have some. These are our dots. Okay, these are our observations, and so in a uh, ideal uh, situation what we want is we like to have a, a build be able to build up a mo a model that is able to predict what's happened uh, after this point but at the same time be able to replicate okay this pattern uh, for for even you know uh, other uh, future outcomes. Um, as I said, uh, the deep uh, deeper learning is used uh, on edge recognition, on um, different areas that requires um, uh, such as uh, um, uh, adaptation of the model to data uh, that uh, have. Uh, uh, re uh, real uh, little difference within within um, each other, and in particular, in particular, uh, we uh, fit new a neural network uh, or uh, artificial neural network when the sample size of the training uh, set is extremely large or when the interpretability of the model is not our high priority. Okay, so to, to build um, a deep learning model, 
and so on artificial neural network, we need to first estimate the parameters. Our parameters are uh, the K, uh, which are the uh, active number of activations, the coefficients, which are our betas, and the weights. Uh, and then I show you why I'm saying this, because uh, um, we have uh, a model, okay, uh, which is uh, uh, this type of model, okay. Uh, so these are our predictors, and this is going to be our model. So a function of the intercept, and then the predictors. But now, as you as you can see, the predictors is binded within a, a, a function. So this h sub k are the um, the hidden. Uh, um, let's say, uh, I, I didn't mention that neural net, deep learning and, or artificial neural network, it's uh, uh, even used within um, when we like to attempt to predict um, uh, um, uh, higher levels of um, um even thinking okay so um it's a prediction algorithm that um is built up on different layers and so if if we set up name as neurons okay you can imagine it's such as a brain artificial brain that uh, uh, uh um, it's being fit feed up with um, inputs of information and then adapt to be able to replicate the observed phenomenon. So our model is, is not just a simple regression model or not even a general linear model, okay? It's a, it's a more, um, you know, uh, adjusted, okay, differently. And we, so we use a function of the um, uh, of our uh, predict predictors, and uh, in order to do that, we imagine that our predictors are um, um, splitting up within um, uh, a, a certain number of. This is one layer but a certain number of uh, neurons okay so which are our k so this uh, uh, this is um, uh, 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 one layer and this a sub k this this values here are the numbers of hidden neurons okay so uh, or the number of activations. Um, as you can see, this is the, our model function, okay? And this, this, this function h sub k of x, it's our activation function, okay? And uh, um, what, what happened here, it's a transformation. So we feed uh, a selected um, function um, that we decide to use with our predict predictors, so our observed data, to then obtain a transformation. Let's imagine that we have a, a linear uh, combination or um, uh, we then um, ap uh, applying an, a function to our predictors, what we do is uh, obtaining a nonlinear transformation 
of the input layer. So basically, what we do is a nonlinear transformation of the linear transformation. And this transform h sub k of x uh, because it's the impeded lands during the training procedure to then release a new uh, functions, a new function that will produce new values. Okay. Um, so our objective is to retrieve this value and this value should be the closest as possible to our observed data and so be able to predict new outcomes. So the g of x is a function, for example, using in the logistic regression, and this converts a linear function into probabilities, uh, because we need a probability. We use the probability that what our model has found will be as close as close as as, um, as possible to uh, our observed data to release a probability uh, that a future value uh, will be uh, almost correct. So we need a way to retrieve the probabilities that this would be um, our um, value and. How do we choose within different outcomes that, that we on the first layer obtain is to um, convert uh, uh, to, into probabilities between zero and one. How do we do that? Okay, so we use some activation function. So we transform our predictor passing through an activation function that we that we choose uh, and then uh, we found a result and then we, that result would be used again with back propagation to go back to the uh, observed data and match the distance between what we found and what it was and then attempt to predict based on the probability that this will happen a future value. Okay, so the type of activation function that are usually uh, chosen are a sigmoid. Uh, no, I want to show you something. So um, there are different type of function that we can use. Okay, and why we choose this type of functions? Because they need to be um, able, so you need to be able with this type of function to calculate the derivative of the function. Because what we want is the minimum distance, is the minimum distance, and this minimum distance is, is obtained with, with uh, a calculation of a derivative. So the type of activation function that we, we can uh, use are a sigmoid, uh, a ReLU function, or a soft plus, or uh, other general, uh, um, other, other type of functions, such as polynomials, splines, or hyperbolic tangent. So going back to, um, so a sigmoid can be calculated with this formula. Okay, so in this example, we use a sigmoid function uh, and we make the function in R this way. So um, this is the, the same thing that we find here. So this is a transformation. And so we have, a, and, uh, so applying this function, uh, and then I added the, the, this, um, the result of this uh, uh, function to our predictor, and then I made a visualization so that we can see 
this is a sigmoid, a bit of like you know, it should be like a bit more visible, but you know, the, it gives the idea of what's happening. A relu function is another type of function that is used as an activation function because it's very um so the derivative is it, it's very simple and straightforward. So as well, we can see that if we comp this is the difference, this is a sigmoid and this is a relu function. Relu function is zero before it's an zero before uh, when x is le um, less than zero and then equal to the value of x. Then we have a soft plus, which is another function, and it's a, the natural log of one plus the exponentiation of x. Uh, this is of this kind. Okay. And then, so uh, I don't see uh, what's happened um, here. Okay. So this is a stat quest. Okay, I'll put the, the link. Uh, um, I can I can put the link in the chat. Okay, uh, this is a very interesting um, video, and there is a even the part two uh, which explains back propagation, and it's it's really uh, clear. Okay. So, but uh, for now, let, let's let's see what's happened uh, when we basically have this. Uh, they in this example they use the soft plus, you know. So they uh, start filling up with a value of x, which we're supposed to estimate these values. But for now, to see what's happened, he put inside a certain values, uh, and then. Um, put this value inside this function okay the x value would be inside here and this release a value that will go back into our um uh, original uh, um observed data okay uh, and this is the procedure of feeding. Okay, so, um, and then you see here they, they use dosage. So you can imagine that this is a, um, this is campanular um, as the same as this one here. But he starts building up the points within this campanular that we are the observed data um, uh, based on the result of this, these other values here. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, um, I'm, if I'm clear. <laughs> but uh, so this is our model. These are our activation function. Uh, and so what's happening inside the model? Uh, so what we we need to build up these things are the number of hidden neurons, the number of activation functions. But let's say that we we have uh, one layer, so we have just one of these. So we need the number of um, hidden neurons. Uh, we select a function, uh, which is an activation function. We do the transformation, and then we need the weights. Okay, so these are the things that we uh, want to estimate to uh, uh, basically build up uh, our um, uh, our model. Okay, and here we can see that uh, so we have seen that we set a number of k we we select an activation function, which is a sigmoid, for example, okay? And then we now, we miss to, to, to set the weights. So we can set the weights, for example, um, uh, in the, as our model is 
a compiler, so we can imagine that the, the weights of each value, that this value can happen, uh, behave normally. So we can uh, build up a matrix uh, of, uh, of the number of hidden neurons, in our case a five, and we build up two uh, weights. Okay, so weight one and and weight two. Okay, so they they are they, this is the the what we are going to put inside our model. And so the uh, the first weight, which is uh, the inflection point. So of our um, of our server data, uh, um, is used to pass from a, a linear function to a non-linear function. So we do a transformation. Okay. So we use a linear function and then we transform it into a non-linear function to go back to uh to our observed data uh, and so we need to uh what we need to find it's a, it, the intercept and the slope as a, in any other models okay and uh, we pass through different attempt okay because we can say that for example uh our um Uh, okay, we can say that so the, if the if the uh, the slope uh, or the intercept changes, so this line will change. Okay, so what we do is basically attempting to um, identify as in any other modeling procedure. Um, uh, the point, uh, a function that is able to catch these points here, and then another function which is able to identify these other points here, and then uh, based on the on an intercept um, and on a slope, uh, and so. Uh, to in order to do this, we do feed forward, and so th this is a function that is inside the Kira's or the Torch packages, uh, and um, this function uh, is used to obtain the predicted outputs. Okay, and so it is a four uh, of the weights. And uh, we obtain the first uh, activation number one. We apply the function that we chose, like uh, the, the, the sigmoid. So you feed the, 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 the function with the sigmoid. And then you calculate the second uh, uh, activation level with the second weight. So then uh, we need to, uh, once we have found this value, we go back to back propagation. And the back prog propagation algorithm, what does is uh, applying uh, a derivative to our function. And so this is the reason why it should be uh, a function that is able to so which can be derived. Okay, 
So back propagation, the back propagation algorithm multiplies the derivative of the activation function. So it is fundamental to define the derivative of the activation function that is needed for computing the gradient. So the gradient uh, in the it's the very little distance that we, we need to find the lowest value um, released within the function um, when it's fitted with our values in a way that this distance is it, it's the lowest as possible. And so this is the gradient, you know? Uh, and um, we use uh, the derivative activation. This is uh, the, the derivative of the sigmoid. Then we need to calculate the model error. Uh, and uh, we use uh, the prediction from the feed forward, the function that we just made. Uh, and uh, so we calculate the error as in any other model. So our uh, response variable minus the prediction. Uh, and so this, the, the sum of, uh, of errors, and this will be another function to use. And then we apply the back propagation which is uh, uh, maybe maybe is a, it's clearer to see it from here. This is the back propagation function. It basically takes the pre the predictions made with the feed forward function, then use uh, the, the derivative of the of the function, which is usually called a cost function and then so you have the gradient for the weights and uh, it computes the gradients for, for weight one and weight two and uh, finally uh, save the values to then release um, Uh, the um, our coefficients basically in our model our our beatings what what in the, in general linear regret in linear regression our, our beatings through these procedures we then obtain these adjusted beatings okay so and then finally this is the model the stochastic gradient descent which is uh, uh, here the uh, specified the number of epochs uh, is used the model error, the back propagation, and then so adjust the model parameters from uh, the weights, the learning rate times the gradient. And so consider the model error each time and then return the result. So we see the application of this. This is the function applied to the model. And it's very fast. So you don't need to, uh, to do uh, anything. And um, installation or things, uh, conflicts and everything. But this is just one hidden layer, okay? Uh, so you run the model, uh, you specify learning rate and everything. And then uh, this is the model result. So you see what's really some levels of numbers. So if we like to, to have this, uh, this is uh, the, the second, which is this, this, this matrix here. This matrix is basically our uh, uh, error, okay? Our model error. So we take this and then we put this inside a table and we see the results. We can see that this is the 
the error based on the number of epochs. So are the, the, the epochs are the number of tries, uh, such as cross validations. So you, you like repeat the things a certain number of times. Uh, and so you can see that uh, the, the error uh, gets lower. Um, as soon as the uh, epochs are uh, so of a higher value, so the most you try, the the model is feeded with new information and then gets closer to the uh, to the value that it might, is going to be the, the most reasonable one. Okay, so it works very well. And it, it releases new weights. Okay. And then here is tuning. So these weights then are selected based on a certain uh, value of the probability and then chosen to be applied again. Okay. So this is, uh, as I said, the, the model. If we take uh, the first new weight that is list um, table of uh, new weights that is released, or the second, we can see that if we compare the old weights with the new ones, Uh, wait one a new uh, let, let's let's see these two okay so we can see that we have some some differences for example huh? that, that's obvious that they are uh, different in some sense okay so uh, for this reason, you know, you obtain, we obtain uh, our new predictions using optimized parameters. And so we use the feed power function within uh, the new weights, and again, the sigmoid. And then finally, if we plot, uh, as you can see, this, this uh, is our data, our original data, okay? This is our response, our predictor. I add the, um, the, the prediction, which are this one here, made with fit power function, which is uh, this function here, okay? uh with the new weights okay this um this is just one layer and so the result is this so this bluish line is um uh, observed data and the red um curve are the prediction Okay, so this is very interesting. Uh, and I said, um, if you want, you if you go to, uh, I'll show you. This is the um, GitHub repo, and there is more because we have seen artificial neural network, but then there is recurrent neural network, convolutional neural network, and everything. So I wanted to, to, to do this uh, because when we go to the Kiras lab, okay, our, uh, in the chapter, we see that, uh, so there is a, like a bit of, uh, a, bit of a challenge within uh, the installation procedure, 
Do you need to, I don't know if you had any, if you tried, or if you had any issues installing things. Um, but once, one, once you, one, one is done, uh, you just use the function. But what, what this function does, you know? So you need to understand what's happening backwards. Um, and so now that we have a bit of, uh, so obviously you need to go back, have a look at this, uh, look at it again, try it and everything. But uh, now we have an idea of what's happening. So what are the parameters? What's happening inside the function? Uh, this is our Kira's lab, and they use uh, um, and they use the uh, eaters data set and do other things. Okay, so here I don't know if it's nice to do that. Uh, now it's like we we have fifteen minutes more or less, but. Uh, uh, basically, just to, to give you some information, you need to have Python on your machine. You need to install TensorFlow on your machine. And you can do, once you have Python, you can do like in terminal, you're doing pip install TensorFlow. Then you need to install Keras as an R package. Okay, because, you know, uh, which provide reticulate and TensorFlow R packages because you need to have TensorFlow on your machine as you need to have Python on your machine. Then there is a TensorFlow R package. Okay, so you install those things. Uh, and then, uh, so the reticulate package, it's, uh, you know, uh, translator within R and Python, TensorFlow, it's necessary to use Keras, and uh, it is uh, essentially an interface to Python tensor for imp implementation, which calls R and translate uh, the, uh, the information to Python tensor for library. So basically, it's another translator. And while the Keras R package is also an interface to the Python Keras package, uh, and so they work together to cover what what's missing in one and to the other. So uh, basically, the steps are install Python, install TensorFlow on your machine, then install the Keras R package, which pro as a dependencies as reticulate a TensorFlow. So install Keras. Then you need to set up a virtual environment. So you, you need to set up a virtual environment create with this function in, in R. You set up like R reticulate Python path to, path to Python. Um, this way. Okay, path to Python, virtual. You do this once, then call Kiras, install Kiras with the environment, call TensorFlow, install TensorFlow within the environment. And so when you have done all this, you're done. Now, I've done this already. Now it should work. Okay, but to make it work, I need to do these things. Okay, let's see what's happened. Okay, so to run the lab, make sure to do this final step, restart R, make sure TensorFlow is able to find Python, and so you need to do that. Okay, library reticulate this, 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 and then you can start. Okay, this is uh, um, I mentioned in the book that this code is from Deep Learning Without uh, book. Use deep learning is used for these things that we already said. This is a single layer made with ETS data. Okay, so we have seen what's happened there. Now we see 
how to do it with Keras. Basically, we use this data set for a regression model. And the goal was to predict the salary of a baseball uh, player in uh, 1987 using its performance statistics from 1987, 86. So we load ISLR2 and as well as the eaters uh, omit the, uh, the, the missing values. Then we do some uh, like transformations. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Okay. So this is um Okay, so this is our test uh, ID. So we set the, what's happened here is um, like a bit of transformation to, uh, we, we have already seen this thing. So I make it run, this is a linear model, uh, linear regression that is already been done in chapter six. Uh, then, um, so we obtain our first, um, uh, expected value is that this data is this. Okay, so we have uh, the, the football players, and so we want to predict the, the salary here. And so we do salary across all the uh, the predictors uh, uh, on uh, tra the training uh, on the training um, on, on 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 the training set, and then so we extrapolate the um, expected value, which is two fifty four or two fifty five. Okay, so now if we uh, do a general linear model in order to do that this this is not uh, i i could i i didn't change anything on 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 these things uh but it can be done differently but anyway so the, with the general linear model uh cross validation glim net uh, in order to use this we need to make a transformation of the formula uh, Okay, uh, and so the value is slightly lower. Then we use Kiras. So load Kiras, and we make a first model. Okay, and the first model, it's, uh, um, uh, so uh, an artificial neural network, also known as a vanilla neural network. Okay, so the simplest implementation of deep learning. Um, and so this uh, Kiras, uh, what does uh, is to, uh, where am I? Basically making a model. Let's have a look at this, uh, this function. So this function here, it's uh, basically uh, composed uh, of a linear stack of layers. And um, it is a model sequential. So anytime you run it, 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 it says, it advise you that you run it a certain number of times. Okay. So, uh, and um, there are some um, arguments that can be used, such as the input, the type, the, so many things. And we can see how, how in practice it, it's used. So, in, in, in our case, we set up the model, okay, without doing anything else. So as in tidy models, so the, when we set the engine and so the, the model specification that we use it with the data. 
So we use a, we start with this function, Kira's model sequential, then add layer, layer dense with 50 units. These are the Ks, the K values. So in our vanilla example, we use five. So we here we have 50. We chose um, activation function as a ReLU. Okay. And then there is an input shape. Um, the, uh, it's the number of, um, of column. Then we have a layer dropout rate. We set the rate. And then we have a layer dense again with unit one. So basically this is the first uh, model that is made, so we can make it run. And it's uh, like even uh, fast in some senses, this one here, because here, uh, so the model in, in itself is fast. Uh, but then when uh, think there is a, like a construction of the history, which takes a long time. So as you can see, this is a model sequential. It says sequential, and that's it, nothing else. Because it, we have run it one time. And so here we have a layers and all the other specifications, parameters, number of parameters, and so on. OK. So for, for this data, for this data, the authors have set up this uh, Kira's model. The, this is the first type. So we have uh, um, two layer dense and a layer dropout. Okay, so now. Um, uh, Federico, just for your information, we have about five minutes left in the hour. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, uh, I'm nearly done because um, I want to do just this first example, and then there's much more. Uh, so basically, what's happened next that you need to compile the model, considering the loss. Then uh, there is a, um, the, you need to optimize um, and then um, select the metrics. So you do compile, but nothing happened, nothing happened, but the model is compiled. Okay, you, you can see, you cannot see any. This is the history. And this is the thing that takes a uh, long time. Um, and you basically, it's here that you fit the model and you need to, you, you know, you specify the epochs, the batch size, the validation data, and then you can plot the history. So I uh, save it this um well, I save it this one mm. well. Uh, it's not something that can be done. Uh, um, how can I say? Very, uh, there it is. Very, so that fast is not. Mm, I can say it's really, it really takes time, okay? So 
I need to run this because uh, uh, so basically uh, you you run these things and you see uh, that it releases some um, plots which are the same as this one here when I run it. Okay, and here, but here you can see better because. Uh, it's a plotty thing, so you can see the values uh, of uh, um, the loss uh, and the the, uh, the var loss for um, both of them, uh, the mean absolute error and the value of the mean, uh, the values of the mean absolute error, error of, of the values. And so as well, if you plot the history, you have the same thing. So the training and the validation data shows uh, what's happened here with the, uh, the things. And you can see that is a, uh, like decreasing. Uh, and so then they predict and calculate the mean absolute uh, and so the value, it's 536.3, which uh, we had uh, with our linear model, 254 and uh, 252. So, uh, there is a bit more to see. And uh, the rest is many other interesting things to to see. Um, I uh, hope to have given you a bit of like an idea of what's happened um, behind the scene of our construction of a deep learning model. Oh, thank you, Federico, for the great presentation.